dating in 2021? Oh boy, what's that like? I will tell you in the next Dare to Be Better with Ray and Sid. In three, two, welcome one and all to Dare to Be Better with Ray and Sid. I am Ray Powers. I am Sydney Hall. You're in a good mood today. Well, because you just told me what we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's uh, another hot topic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we can all relate to it. I hope we can all relate to it. I hope everybody out there is at one point doing it. Uh -oh. Well, in today's time, it's different. It wasn't like when we were 20. Right. We're talking about dating. Uh, the intricacies, the challenges, the pitfalls, just the overall picture in 2021. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It's changed over the years. You know, it was courting at one point back in the 50s and 60s. And then it became free love later on. And then just became everybody dating everybody, so to speak. And now it's just a mess. Now it's a hot mess. It's a eBay. You're eBay, like, swiping. Exactly. Exactly. Swiping on people. Yeah, someone may just actually, did he hold up his fish wrong? <laughs> Swipe left. Oh, geez. His one piece of hair on his head, he didn't shave it off just right. <coughs> Excuse me. Swipe left. I have to make yeah, sure I'm manning the cough button. You have a little something. But you know what's weird? I well, haven't been coughing. Just of course not, until we come on the air, and you, you save it for when we come on the air. I know. Your this people want to hear you time. cough. I have not coughed at all. That's how it works. It's the same in the recording studio. As soon as somebody hits the red button, that's when all the F-ups happen. You know yeah, that. I know. You were a choreographer. You know the deal. <laughs> we'll, we'll get the rehearsals perfect, and then we'll, uh, mm -hmm. you know, screw the pooch, as they say, mm -hmm. when uh, it's showtime. That's right. Showtime. Of course, but we're talking about dating, mm -hmm. and a couple of people have actually uh, weighed in on this. We have email from several people, and we'll make good. We'll make sure that you all get something nice from our little uh, home gift shop, the Ray and Sid uh, tourist trap. Yeah. But um, let's let's uh, jump into this. Why okay. Not? Okay. Okay. I have dating something. Dating in twenty twenty one. I I kind of <laughs> figured you might have something for us. <laughs> okay. So, okay, excuse the coughing. Well, excuse the coughing. Uh, okay. Because I think maybe maybe I have to cough when I start getting excited about something. Oh, there you go. Because I explain it. Okay, anyway, coughing. Okay, now I'm on. I almost <laughs> caught it with the button. We'll okay. find out if I caught it. Okay, so just take me with a grain of salt. Okay? I always do. But this, I like think, is... Like a good is, margarita. This is interesting. <laughs> Okay, this is how it goes. A man gives to get. Okay, now, when he gives to get, what he gets is sugar, attention from mm -hmm. her, her time, her energy. A man gives to get, if he's balanced. Right. A woman, if she's balanced, receives to reciprocate. Right. So, you hear that? I receive now... If she's ill-balanced, she doesn't reciprocate. If she's balanced, she reciprocates. She'll reciprocate tenfold. She gives her time, her energy, her this, her that. Okay. Now, where I think the downfall happens is that if a man stops giving to get, then the woman takes on that masculine thing, which is, okay, fine. I'm going to give to get, meaning I'm going to give you my time. So mm -hmm. she's trying to be with him too often. I'm going to give him my attention. I don't want him going out with his friends. I don't want him doing this mm -hmm. to get, because what she's trying to get is his time and attention. Well, it backfires because then he finds her needy. He's uninterested in her because she's doing the chasing. So then he turns off 
and he stops giving, she stops reciprocating because now she's chasing. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting. And if if men and women would just stay in their lane, the guy does the guy thing, the girl does the girl thing, which is though the guy has to give, he has to give unconditionally to get. And if he does that, and if she's balanced, she will receive and the woman cannot forget to reciprocate. She must reciprocate and that relationship will keep blooming. It's actually quite brilliant. It is. Do you hear that? Well, that's New York. We have, um, you know, I, I don't think it's coming through with the, uh, I think you feel it more than you hear it. Mm. We talked about this on the first couple of episodes, how no matter how you soundproof a room in New York, unless you're in like a triple fortified uh, recording studio <clears throat> and the whole I guess charm to this uh, yeah, it's a noise format was yeah people we actually did samples uh, sample sizes and uh, I would call them very very informal focus groups mm -hmm. and you know people asked for raw so so that's what you're getting you're getting raw kids unedited 100% unedited mm -hmm. and uh it's like you're sitting in the room with us. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that, though? The give to get, receive to reciprocate. Well, now, if we're talking about dating, are we talking a very broad um, understanding of dating, like actually going on dates to the point where now you're seeing one person exclusively? Is that still considered dating? Oh, yeah, that's still considered okay. dating. Because, of course, there, for us, for us especially, for us men, mm -hmm. um, I think it happens in stages, mm -hmm. you know, where... We're scoping women out, and we're, I hope that's not too sexist sounding, you know, scoping women out. You know what I mean. Yeah. And but you is, still, as a man, if he's yeah. scoping women out, he's still giving to get. Like, he's going right. to give her by taking her to have coffee, right? And then right. what he's hoping to get is her attention. Right. By the way, I don't really apologize for being sexist. I, I you know. No, <laughs> Sorry. No, I just, um, it just seems like... You know, when we're just out looking for somebody, or we're not looking, maybe we're just, you know, meeting people by chance. Mm -hmm. And whether or not we're swiping on an app or going out to a bar old school and trying to meet people, which to me is still the way to do it. It's still the best way to do it. Yeah. Be it a bar, a church, a library, any place on the subway, a Just restaurant. not behind the phone or the computer. Yeah. That would be ideal. And that's still the best way to go about it because you're meeting people and you're actually introducing yourself. Mm -hmm. And people can get an immediate response and an immediate um, impact and an immediate impression on you. Right. Whereas if you're behind an app, your picture could be 20 years old. It might not be you at all. Yes. And it really, I mean, the term catfishing, it mm -hmm. took me a little while to even know what that was. Oh, I've experienced it so many times. Right. <laughs> it's like, you're not that person. You said you were six foot three, blonde hair. And you're clearly five four. Five four. <laughs> By five four, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. My <laughs> they, you might have had blonde hair at one point. Right, it's long gone. It's gone. You don't work out. You yeah. don't have teeth. Right, it could be anything. Anything. And if you're actually meeting face to face, you can make that assessment right away and go, "Oh, I like him," or "Yeah, no, mm -hmm. not my cup of tea." Yeah, men do it. I mean, you know, we know within a few minutes. I think whether or not we're interested in somebody mm -hmm. visually of course we're driven more visually mm -hmm. than women i think yeah um we're almost governed by oh yeah our visual and i'm a beginning. firm believer that um okay i'm gonna tell you my secret to running i won't say the name but it's a dating app i date like the wind we yes <laughs> <laughs> you've made that clear okay so i'm a firm believer that a man knows what he likes to see. He knows what he's attracted to. He knows. He, by nature, knows. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of <clears throat> this kind of analogy. If he's in and he's getting ready for the hunt and he's putting his, you know, the black stuff under his eyes and he's getting his guns and he's getting all his stuff. And all of a sudden, after five hours, he's ready to go. And he opens up the cabin door and there on the deck stands a deer. Well... He's going to shoot the deer, right? drag it inside because he doesn't want to waste the meat. Of course. But he's going to go out and hunt some more. Sure. Now, if the deer 
isn't standing on the porch, he's going to come out and he's going to hunt. He's going to have that hunger, right? So my thing is, when I go on dating sites, I allow the men to come to me. Because typically when a man swipes right on a woman, his picture or whatever comes into my profile. So I see all the men who have swiped right. Now half the battle is done, right? I know at least he's looking for an Asian woman. Right. See what I'm saying? He's not looking for a blonde. Okay. So now half of the battle is getting to know him, talk to him, you know, that kind of thing. And I know that he's willing, usually, to get to know me further than just what I look like. So. <laughs> I wasn't ready that time. I know, it just I had no one. out. We're going to have to change. Okay, I'm ready. What are we changing? I'm going to have to change the name of this show to, uh, to Coughing cough. with Sydney. <laughs> Not Coffee with Sydney. Not Coffee Talk, but Coughing Talk. Coughing. Mm-hmm. I like it. I think we're on to something. We are on to something. Okay. Anyway, I just want to say one we more thing. We weren't smoking anything before we hit the air, I promise. No, though it is a little skunky. Uh, well, it's not from here. Okay. It might be the people next door or, you know, whoever's <clears throat> shooting whatever shows. Okay. Hey, listen. Do you like the trippy background, by the way? I just got done. I told you last episode, I yeah. got off the plane. Maybe you were smoking something. I came here something. and I, I did that. Wow. I painted it. We got all uh, trippy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm saying is that in this dating thing, again, in my old dog years, I've learned that for me... I do like the man to pursue, right? Sure. Give to get. And I do think from day one, if a man continues to give to get from the second he meets her to 10 years down the road, 50 years down the road, I think when the hiccups start, both people, of course, become selfish. Okay, both. Sure. But I think the very first thing that happens is the man stops giving. And then the woman starts taking that masculine step which is fine i'll start giving to him right she gets needy she tries to spend more time with him he doesn't like that because now she's needy instead of ladies you just gotta back off if and i try to do this i let him kind of dictate the speed especially when i first meet the speed of this meeting this relationship if he steps closer to me i step closer if he steps away I step away. It's just, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's letting him hunt. Yeah, right? it is a game. I mean, and it's, you know, it's just how things are. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's contrived. I don't think it's uh, superficial. I just think that's the nature of how we interact. We're completely different, men and women. And I know that's like taboo to say these days because, you know, I could wake up this morning and feel like an Asian woman myself. But, right. I mean, you know, truth be told, being serious for a moment um we're different Mm -hmm. you know i just missed all of that you could wake up i was making a joke i I probably pissed (laughs) off a third of our listeners and viewers i apologize (laughs) half-heartedly like i do if i offended anybody i love those apologies okay Uh, my point being you know very well Mm. you and i are night and day when it comes to um, the way we approach things. Well, everything. And this is what's beautiful, though, about you, because we have a working relationship, so it works, right? right? Mm-hmm. But the reason a lot of it works, and this is the truth, you give. You give to me to get me to tick along, work within the system. To I do my best. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> to work with the program. Keep That's what you do. In line. You mm-hmm. give. To get, so then you get me working along, ticking along. Then what I do is I receive, and then I reciprocate, and I try to do my very best for you. Right? And you do. You do a bang-up job. Thank you. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Because if you stopped giving to me, you'd get a really ticked-off Sid that would, you know, I can be very fun. and a little Sid. That could... T- Difficult. Tick, that could be a whole like product line. Ticked off Sid. You got a ticked off Sid T-shirts. Oh my god! A little doll. You What's know? happening? You tap her on the head and she goes uh, <laughs> demonic on you. I'm in. I want one. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? <clears throat> Let me tell you one more thing before I forget, though. Okay. This is something that really drives me up the wall when I read. And ladies, my children will always come first. Sorry to tell you. Okay, let's just discuss this. 
the love between man and woman and the love between parent and child, apples to oranges. It is. It's different. Uh, love is abundant. Love is not something that needs to be divided up. Anytime you divide something up and you put people in line, somebody has to lose. So if somebody has to lose, that means you're never going to have a cohesive, thriving relationship. So if the guy is really a great father or woman, you know, mother, but if they're really a great father, you don't even have to say that because of course you're going to be there for your children. Right. Of course you're going to raise them. And if I'm a balanced woman, I would never ask you not to be there for your children. It sounds like somebody was probably burned by a, a woman or anybody who, you know, made them choose and maybe was just too needy. Mm -hmm. And in, in their eyes, too needy for what they could give. And maybe they're just throwing that out there as a, uh, a caveat. Yeah. And like you said, in a perfect relationship, mm -hmm. that's not an issue. Yeah, but, but he gets a swipe left every time with me. Well, no, understandable. Mm -hmm. That's somebody who is obviously very prickly right now. And he has, in my opinion, again, when you put people in a situation to compete, mm -hmm. somebody's going to lose. And if he's really great with parenting, he that understanding that he doesn't have to do that should be within him. Now, if he has attracted a woman that would force him or ask him to choose, then maybe he or she, it could be vice versa, right, needs to take a step back and look at what they have done to attract that type of needy person into their life. Now, I'm, I'm going on with this because what if he's taken this woman in and he truly believes that, so he's making her compete. If he's making her compete, he's going to get an unhappy woman that's constantly digging at him and scratching at him, trying to get his time and attention. However, if he never put her in a position to compete, and he gave time to his children where his children needed time, he gave time to his partner where his partner needed time, guess what? She wouldn't dig at him because she was she's filled up. Do you see what I'm saying? Just a little ownership right there is what I think needs to happen. Of course, the woman was probably ill-balanced. He probably attracted that. Yeah, that happens. And I'm not saying that he didn't attract that. I'm just saying he's... <laughs> and I did give my two cents to a guy. <laughs> and I said to him, you're going to hate me. you probably hate me forever. But lucky me, you're going to think of me every day. You're going to be ticked off about me every day. Uh -huh. I'm going to own you until you start considering that maybe love doesn't need to be a pie that's divided up. Now, do you think, I mean, I know it has to be a different dynamic for a single moms to date, you know, as opposed to single dads dating. Uh, same idea, you're not going to bring somebody home to meet the kids until you're sure right. they're at least going to be around for, you know, a considerable second. You right. don't want to just bring <laughs> home every Tom, Dick, and Harry that uh, you're going to go out with. by you, right. right. Because the kids are going to be like, well, first of all, you know, mom is dating too much. Yeah. And then secondly, it's like, uh, it just, it's not a conducive atmosphere. Right. But, um, you know, I was making the point with dating on a, from the man's point of view, um, that when we start, um, you know, we're very, which is the selection process of who we're dating. Well, we're like, we're like you. If you're dating like the wind, we want to date like the wind too. And, you know, to settle down with somebody, um, you made the point of giving to get, getting to give. You know, we do come at that from opposite ends. You know, you're giving the sugar to get the commitment. We're, you know, giving the commitment to get the sugar. And. Okay, wait. Okay. <laughs> okay, say it again. Just that part. I'm listening. I was saying that men and women normally right you know we approach things from opposite ends mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you want the commitment so you're willing to spread a little sugar so to speak and uh you know when you're ready to when you find the guy who you want to to uh have in your life as a rule women will do that mm -hmm. women want the commitment so you know they're selling it with a little sprinkle of sugar mm -hmm. you know the man who wants the sugar you know will make a concession <laughs> as much as he has to and say, okay, I can settle down with you. I'll see just you if this is what it takes to get a little bit of that sugar. And, you know, so it's, it's completely, you know, polar opposite as far as, 
We're meeting in the middle, but we're starting from different points. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know? <clears throat> and you know what's been really interesting? More than... I'm trying to keep this clean for sure, uh, some sure. of the channels that we're I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but more than not, I get men that are asking me to stop dating, right? They get interested and they want me to stop dating, mm. which I'm more than happy to do. It's... Very time consuming dating like the women. Oh, it is. And you know, there are there is a twofold um caveat there. They might be earnest about wanting to settle down with just you because hey, you know, you're awesome. Or you'll get the narcissist guy who, you know, has the double standard. That's he's what I see. Yeah, he's yeah. willing to see whoever he wants, but you need to stay home because that's right. I can't fathom the thought of you know you going out with other guys who right. are going to be better than me. Right, right. Well, I have to tell you this. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say it. It doesn't matter. What I am saying is yes. I that's what I get often. Yeah. And then uh, you know, and then you find out they're still out there dating. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're the one that asked me to stop dating. Well, I meant only you, not me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I got to sell my oats because God forbid, you know, any woman misses out on all this. All <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All this that I can't even pull together myself. Right. It's it's the epitome of uh, insecurity. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's exactly what it is. Yes. I have to cough. Oh, go for it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is much easier than doing all this time-consuming editing. Sorry, people. <laughs> Okay. But uh, absolutely, you're you're absolutely right. There is a lot of that, and I'm sure women do it too. Oh, you have this simpy yes. guy who will, you know, grovel at your feet and, you know, sell all of his self-respect, and you know, the woman will be out doing her thing, and the guy will be there mm -hmm. for when she decides to land on this porch. Yeah. For the most part, you know, you do see it with more men that have the double standard. I can admit that. I mean, I I don't do it myself, but. I never really had. If I want to date, you know, hey, you go date too. You do your thing. Yes. When we decide mutually yeah. that we're going to be exclusive, then you have to do it. Yeah. You can't just. You can't just ask her. You stay her. in the corner, right? Nobody puts baby in the corner. Yeah. Nobody puts Sid on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Except for I am going to bring this up. I love Yellowstone. Oh my gosh, I love Yellowstone. Okay, Yellowstone has this character named Rip in it. Rip is mm, ripplicious. And then there's Beth. And Beth is a little prickly pear. She's aggressive. She's out in the world making her millions. She's out doing her thing and being, you know, whoever she wants to be with. And Rip, who, you know, he's doing questionable things, but it's not about cheating. It's more about life or death. <laughs> who's living, who's dying. But, you know, it's a very interesting thing because he kind of just lets her sow, sow her wild oats. Mm -hmm. But he's not a weak man. He's definitely a, what do you call him? An alpha alpha, an alpha male? male. And there's a lot of definitions to alpha males or a lot of different uh, interpretations of it. But He's definitely ahead. an alpha male. You'll have to watch it. Oh, it's fabulous. Anyway. I wish I had time for TV, but I mean. But, you, but you have to binge that with that one eye. When you have a few minutes, binge. Okay, anyway. Mm, but he's the character. He's, he waits for Beth. Though he's living his life, he waits for her while she si sows her, her wild oats. Anyway, it just doesn't really matter. I Sounds just had to bring... like one of these, uh, you know, postmodern woke uh, situations mm -hmm. where they wanted to put the woman in that situation. Could be. All you I know? know is freaking one of the most brilliant shows ever. Yellowstone. You can Yellow. send me my royalty check. <laughs> Today there you go. Be better. Thank Sydney you. plugging your show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be worth something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Freaking phenomenal. Okay, anyway, moving on from that. Well, that's, that's a good note. That's a good uh, reference. But I'm sure people listening have checked it out. So. Oh, there. gosh. November 7th, their final season. Oh, okay. I'm going to be there. I mean, it's bigger to me than any Super Bowl, than any Christmas, than anything November 7th. Yeah, we know what to get Sid for uh, for Christmas, the box set. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Are they still doing box sets with DVDs? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I just was crazy. Oh, sure. You're Gen Z. You don't know what a box set is. <laughs> I don't know what a box set is. I got it. I caught that one. What is Gen I Z? I mean, what is a box set? A box set of like a season of your favorite show. 
Oh, or, or like all Little the House seasons. on the Prairie. I had a box. <laughs> okay, there you go. See? Yeah, a box set that is was usually a box set. Right, it's usually one series on a DVD. Oh. Or maybe, yeah, whatever you can fit on a DVD. Oh, really? I just didn't realize it was called a box set. No, I think what they do is they usually put either one or two episodes on a DVD, and then mm. they'll sell you, you know, 10, say, whatever. If it's 24 episodes of the season, it would I be a, it would be a 12-pack. I see. And, I, yeah, you, <clears throat> you want to sell every season yeah. separately so you maximize the buying power. Well, now you don't have to get me a box Selling set power. because it's on, it's streaming. It's streaming. Everything is streaming. That's what I was <laughs> getting at was that I was dating myself with the whole box oh, set reference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even a millennial. I'm past that. I'm mid-Gen X. <laughs> Early Gen X, probably. What's happening? I don't, I don't know. Do we even know what's going on? <laughs> Seriously. We're going to question that now. How many minutes did we make? We're up to 25. We got five more of this. Wow. Yeah. That was the longest I think we've made it in a while of from, what is that that you call it? Derailing. Taking a left turn. Taking a uh, left turn. There you go. Yeah, we have to monetize that left turn. Yeah. And uh, That took a sale. long time. It did. They were pretty focused. I mean, mm. there were a couple of little references here and there, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm just saying dating, dating is a huge challenge we could probably do a whole huge. series and a whole season on just dating mm -hmm. i mean you know i mean it's a billion dollar industry everybody's doing a little series on it because well, it's just craziness yeah i mean you know the restaurant industry is uh part of it the club scene you know yes go for it okay, go i ahead. keep thinking you have a question and it's like, yeah, now I know what that is. It okay. took me a minute. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Now. No, I was just mentioning how, you know, the dating scene just, um, you know, it's a huge, huge uh, moneymaker. Because yeah. obviously, when you're going on dates, you're going places, to the movies, mm -hmm. to restaurants, to wherever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. if people stop dating, we're, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> Economy's in trouble. Yeah, really. But uh, but you know what else is crazy is um, I'll go out and I like to find out because you actually, Ray, I don't know if you know this, that I was asking you about how come it's so hard to find a man who, I can find a man who makes money, mm -hmm. right, successful professionally, but finding that man who's pulled together personally, worked on himself, those kind of things. And do you know what you said to me? I'm going to remind you. This is what you said, and it has stuck with me. Sydney, a man, from the second you guys have been being raised, right? You plop out on this earth. Mm -hmm. A man is being taught how to make money, get educated, go to right. college, uh, stay focused, you know, that stuff. So he becomes a master at those things, and most, not all, but many grow up, they're successful, they know how to make money. But all of a sudden, now they're in a career, they're making money, they have a, you know, house, whatever. And now these, the women come along, and especially at this age, and they're hoping he's pulled together, right? right. But the problem is, he's never really, no one's ever probed him or encouraged him to say, Ray, as you're growing up, I would like you to really focus on your feelings. I would like you to focus on um, communication, you know, those things. Mm -hmm. So then, here you are, and at this age, these men are looking for, you know, hopefully never to be dating again. Right. But they haven't, they haven't pulled their personal life together. And what did I say about that? And you said it's because their focus is on their professional life, and now they're at a place where they have time or the interest to focus on their personal life. But they're oh, I'm so sorry. okay. I do it all the time. But they're behind the eight ball because they took you know, 30 years or 20 right. years here and no years here. And now they're here trying to do this. And the woman has been working on it. Or you have a, a case where a man gets divorced after 25 years or he's a widower mm -hmm. and he's been out of the dating scene. And now it, it looks nothing like mm -hmm. when he started dating back in the 70s or 80s or whatever it was, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, swipe, less swipe. What is that? You know? dating app what are you talking about we got to the regal beagle like on three's company and we uh <laughs> we pick up uh you know mm -hmm. hot chicks and uh and studs right mm -hmm. hunks that's what they used to call yeah, them then. yeah like tom Selleck and those people yeah yeah but um yeah i mean 
I don't know. Like I said, men will talk about their feelings to an extent. Sure. But, you know, we've been basically trained to, like you said, not just chase the uh, chase the job, but be the provider, be the protector. And, yeah, we do have feelings. We have different levels of um, being governed by our emotions. Women are more susceptible to it. But, um, yeah, we're allowed to have them, too. I, I, I understand the whole thing. And addressing, you know, what you need yeah. to be successful at dating. I mean, it's not easy. You have to, to look in the mirror and to honestly assess yourself has got to be one of the toughest things in the world. Yeah. If you're being honest. Yeah. And especially know. if you've never really looked at yourself. You know what right. I'm saying? Some people don't, right? Mm -hmm. Most people probably mm -hmm. don't have a fair assessment. You're doing, you're Same taking thing. pictures with a Snapchat filter and you're looking yeah. at yourself as that person. You know, mm -hmm. both visually and... Yeah, male and female. That's true. And they just keep doing the same thing over and over, thinking they can put a filter on their picture or show the 20-year-old picture, and everything's oh just going to work itself out. <laughs> it's like Einstein's uh, definition of insanity, right? Yeah. Trying the same thing over and over and hoping for a different result. Mm -hmm. But I really do think <clears throat> if more of us did the give to get, the get receive to reciprocate... But you gotta, you got, both have to be balanced, right? And you must be doing this because you're looking to give to the other person. Right. You're looking past yourself. I think it would be very successful. I do too. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't think this is the last that we've come in contact with this subject. This show is over, believe it or not. 30 minutes has come and gone. Are you still with us? I mean, if you're with us, you put up with a lot, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Sydney coughing all over the place and giving me a bath. No, it's I not know. Happening. Well, that's why. That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll definitely be revisiting this because a lot of you did uh, reach out to us on this subject. And, you know, for di at different points, different angles, different aspects, different specific questions. Mm -hmm. And we only scratched the surface, so, you know, this will be good. I know. Going forward. Mm, it's I, exciting. I always learn something from you. I do. Really? I do. Well, I learned something from you, too. Did well, you see that? You did. About did. why the guy is not pulling himself together as quickly? It makes all the sense in the world. Every once in a while, you know. <laughs> I'll come out with a gem. That's all the time we have here, kids. Remember, at the end of the day, dare to be better. With Ray and Sid. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Hey, thanks for checking us out. If you enjoyed the show, like the video, subscribe to this channel, and please tell your friends. We'd also love it if you headed over to daretobebettershow.com for tons of cool photos, extras, and a chance to shop for some sweet show swag. <laughs> say that five times fast. I can barely say it once. If you keep coming, we'll keep delivering. Thanks again.